Welcome to Fire, Burn, Culture, Bubble. We're your hosts, Artemis Fox. And Luna Hawks. And today, we have a special guest in the house. We have Michael Lasham, everyone. Yes, Yay. thank you. Thanks for having me here, guys. So, Michael is the lead guitarist and singer of Annie in the Water, which is an amazing local band. Yep! Woohoo! We enjoy his shows as often as we can. So some other things that he really likes doing is skateboarding and surfing and snowboarding. And luckily he gets to travel a lot because of his career as a musician. So he gets to do all of these awesome things. And when he can, he really, really loves to cook as well. Yes. Didn't you say something about like sound therapy? I'm excited to, uh, to learn about that later. Yep, yep. That um, is also another little thing that I do on the side as well. So you just went on tour, right? So like, tell mm -hmm. us a little bit about that. Like, what was tour like? What you experience? Any cool memories you got for us? You want to share? Yes. Uh, first of all, I'd like to thank you guys for having me on the show. Really excited. Thanks to all of you who are watching. This oh. is uh, this is great information that might be a little bit more uh, uh, underground, and I think it's great to bring up some good, beautiful stuff. So. As for tour, tour was wonderful. Uh, we toured with a female artist, Haley Jane. It was called the Spread Rumors Tour, which uh, not only featured some of her original music, we also, as Indian Water, performed original music, and then we performed a set of uh, Fleetwood Mac's Rumors album. Ooh, awesome. yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, that's cool. It was great. It was a very successful tour, um, and it was really great because having Haley on the road was really wonderful. She's a... Uh, Good friend of mine and also a fellow musician but having her on the road and on stage really added a huge element to the overall performance it was it was beautiful it was a lot of energy on stage and we both learned each other from learned from each other from so much and the whole band did and it was a really wonderful experience yeah a lot of it was a it was a pretty intense tour it was 10 shows and about um about 20 or no, 10 shows in about like 16 days uh, with our production team who did a fantastic job as well. So it was a great tour and I'm very, very happy at the success of it. Yeah. Cool. Mm -hmm. I, uh, you know, that actually inspired me for one of the questions I wanted to ask you about is what was her name again? Haley Jane. Haley Jane. So when we're talking about uh, flow state, you yep. know, like you entering into that flow state where kind of like it works through you. Um, how was the flow state with Haley? Did you have to try to experience something new with her? Was there a flow? Uh, and then if you want to segue a little bit and like your flow state with music and you just kind of like letting it take over. Yeah, that's a fantastic question. Um, yeah, with music I, I, um, and also a lot of other parts of my life, flow state is actually a huge, huge part. Um, I just read the book, The Rise of Superman, and that was a wonderful experience because Sometimes you get in that state where your frequency is just it's going and your body's tuned in, you're happy and you're and you're in that zone and, and when we can find out how to kind of tune ourselves to that, it can happen more often. And um, and I right before tour started, I actually had read the book uh, Art of Superman, uh, Flow State, uh, research right before linking up with Haley Jane. So it's very interesting you asked that question. With her, it was fantastic because she also is such a strong, energetic performer on stage. And being of, of a strong, feminine energy, uh, she has got a bunch of Virgo vibes, uh, you know, <laughs> yeah. uh, a bunch of Virgo vibes. Um, but she also just has such a magnetism about her and an energy about her that is it's commanding, and but it's beautiful. It's, it's She really, it's, it's like a childlike vibe within a woman's body and intelligence and and divine kind of feminine energy so working with her was really beautiful because she really put it all out there she really opened up but at the same time she was very she was very uh, professional with it and uh, disciplined on stage so working with her was beautiful because I was in able to my get into my full state whenever I perform mm -hmm. It's fairly. Uh, it's it's be, it's become a practice that I get into that flow fairly quickly, um, which I'm. Um, sometimes it's a little bit more difficult. Sometimes it's really easy. With her, it was so instantaneous. We would get on stage. People, the energy in the room was also incredible. Uh, it's just the alignment of the two parties really made these huge shows. We sold out the whole second half of the tour pretty much. Yeah. Uh, yeah, it was great and. Um, but being on stage with her, there was just these moments where 
I would see her and I would try to build up that energy like with my performance and the dynamic and then she would sometimes just be giving me energy and there was just moments we would just see each other like eye to eye while performing and it was just so intense and raw and it was it was great because it it, it, it was so it was almost primal while at the same time mm. being so profound and professional and enjoyable and entertaining so the flow with between her and uh, myself was fantastic the flow between her and the rest of our band was fantastic the flow of the entire tour was really an incredible experience so I want to like segue into that one too the flow state of when you notice like with her and stuff but also internally do you ever feel like another besides just like your own spirit and your own subconscious mind do you ever feel that there is another like spirit like taking over kind of like some either kind of past life energy some spirit guide that's working with you um, anything like that like do you feel that influences your music at all um i've never thought of it in a way of well actually it, it yeah having a specific type of energy um come through i've never thought of it necessarily as a specific type i can i, I think when there's out I'll, I'll actually feel past life energy when i go to different cities mm. uh when i went to salem massachusetts mm. i had a very uh su significant reaction energetically to that town when i went to shelburne falls massachusetts uh new england has a lot of very uh old colonial but also like actually a lot of wiccan vibe and and uh and i actually like find that to be very intriguing so i see that when i travel a lot and i meet people off the stage that sometimes i get that past life recognition uh when i'm on stage performing there are moments where i i i, I feel it's more like, like i'm a vessel and i'm as if i can ground myself and prepare myself and and do the work off the stage as well then that vessel will allow for energy to play out and I've definitely had, I think, different energetic influences that have come through at certain times. Mm. Sometimes I'll play more like of a rhythm and blues style. Sometimes I'll play more of a rockin' style. Sometimes I'll play in more of a dynamic style. I think, I don't know if it's entities or if it might be frequencies or energy or whatever you would like to call it, but I do feel that there are unique, I'd like to say frequencies that happen like when I'm performing, like the sound therapy, I'll, I'll be doing yoga performances, or I've done performances for uh, children, disabled children, even though they're more intuitive than normal humans most of the time. And the way that I perform for them is a very different, delicate, but powerful way too. So how it comes through, I'm not really sure um, if it's particular entities. I try to, I try to be open so that I don't try to understand things too much because if I'm in that state of being like, what was that? And what would it like then I get very tactile where I kind of just let it happen and it's the show. But sometimes there are things that happen that I have I have little information on and I will never be able to explain for the rest of my life. Right? That's a beautiful answer and I think it's kinda like channeling, like that's kind of just coming through you. And I know that when I perform and we perform together sometimes so we've had experiences like you described with Haley and we'll just like look at each other and be like whoa and it's almost as if we become the witness of what's happening like if you allow the art whether it's music or it's dance or whatever you create to actually flow through you freely without overthinking it without forcing it and really guiding it too much it's almost like you can be that witness that just watches it happen almost and is like whoa like you get to kind of experience your own art and then experience the people's reaction so that's what I'd love to talk about next is you move people literally with your music and what do you feel like when you're on stage making people move do you feel kind of like a conductor and like a power to that and like a beautiful connection with the audience how does the audience move you in return like what does that feel like the exchange with moving the audience yeah that's a great question and uh 
and yeah, I I actually when I when we did the event together for Halloween at Sackets Harbor, I thought that was wonderful. It was even, it was yeah. even raining a little when I was bit. A vampire. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And, but it was like raining a little bit, just like a little like bit of drizzle. But you guys were doing the the uh, the fire dancing as well, and and you guys, but you did you prepared for you had your own setup and everything. Like I, in a way, like Brad and I were watching, we're like, wow, this is like just the same thing you and I did. Like, mm-hmm. setting up your stuff, getting ready for it, but... And then it rains. Yeah. <laughs> like, but, shit. <laughs> but you guys still, like, you know, you it, it was beautiful. It was beautiful. It was powerful, you know. And uh, I, I think when it comes to... Uh, so I just wanted to say and recognize that. Uh, I really yeah, thank you. I think, you. I think it's beautiful. great. I think... And it is it is very interesting how everybody... Because it's like, almost like, like Reiki. Um, everything is kind of like an energetic expression. You know, a woman that's in the kitchen cooking like southern hospitality food like like if if, uh, if it's like a group of hikers that are for off the road after t- three days in the mountains and this woman gives them this bountiful amazing meal it has a massive energy reaction individually yeah. from each one of those hikers as well but um and i think that's why it's beautiful with like fire dancing how the reaction you get from people you know it can scare people it can intrigue people it can uh, empower people it can spark a something for some people too which i really like so when i pre- perform music just like what you were you know talking about with how you guys focus on your craft is there's uh there's times when i'm performing and as long as i, I think and this is really interesting we're talking about this because uh, after the tour i really took time to reflect and think about like the tour because it was so much so quickly it was such an intense tour in such a short amount of time taking time to even think about a show the next day you couldn't we had to think mm. about production we had to set up we had to be on on the go but uh for rooms and 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 the and the performances it really does come down to sharing a space with people that decided to come there and yeah. experience something and i i do see that the joy is pretty much the number one thing that i really love seeing the action for it and when I'm performing that intention was the most important thing that I learned that Brad and I did too which I'm fortunate to have another musician that shares that sentiment to perform to intrigue people and bring joy another intention that we have is I used to call breaking people out of their shell but I would be a little too intense in the early part of my career with that so I started to I started to uh, to change that I uh, kind of philosophy to expressing my ourselves authentically so we can see others express themselves in their authentic but in their in a way that's their authentic selves in a, in a positive state you know um, and so the more I kind of like express myself authentically you'll see other people in the crowd kind of one by one they're start jiving the next thing you know the room's kind of bumping and the energy's flowing and while I'm doing that, it, it can come from somebody in front of me. Like, there could be a show where I'm pretty tired and I'm, I'm really, like, working, and I see somebody just sitting there, eyes closed, just, like, totally having it. And I'm like, that's precisely why I'm doing this. Like, thank you. Like, we were at Higher Ground, and we had, uh, it was to finish out the, yeah, we were at Higher Ground to finish out the tour, and it was, it was last show, it was sold out. There was a lot of very reputable people that came to check us out uh, my mom and dad were there my dog was there so I had all these external things going on and I was very very preoccupied and I, and I wanted it to be so good you know we had videographers there photographers and I kind of spooked myself a little bit I was so busy but then in the back of the room at the end of the show like towards the end of the show there was this, this gentleman my friends uh, Kylie and uh, Kylie and uh, Lacey introduced me to their friend who was uh, vision impaired but he had like a great that teacher down he was the coolest guy you'd never like if I if I didn't see the walking stick I wouldn't have known the guy was just cool he was rad and he, he's vibing out and while we were performing he's in the back of the crowd and you could just see him just completely taking it all in you know his even his stick was down to his side and he was just like he was so engaged and and that for me like really impacted me in a positive way to make me realize that that's that's a big part of why I'm doing it. And the most beautiful thing is the intention behind it. If I can focus on that being kind of the direction of where I would like the music to go, rather than 
oh yeah, it, like people are seeing me, I'm gonna make a bunch of money out of this. Like I'm gonna meet a bunch of chicks from here. Like if that's the intention, I wouldn't be here right now. I would be probably very sick. I'd probably be very. Uh, I'd probably be dead right now. Honestly, I thought about that. <laughs> Almost. If I was, if I, if I, if I was that kind of person, I, I would. I, my career could be over right now. Instead, my career has a longevity to it. Yeah. I think that uh, the intention is what either propels you or what poisons you. You know. So I, I, uh, I want to touch on also the sacred places and stuff like that because mm-hmm. I thought that was pretty cool. Um, we met. It was, or we did a gig. Where was it? it was Alexandria Bay? Or the Sackets Harbor? Sackets. Was it this past Halloween? Yeah, that yeah. one. That one. Um, I feel power there and stuff. I thought that's like a very good like, line of energy. Yes. And I want to talk about, you, you You mentioned something earlier when we were just like hanging out and vibe and talk about like your Celtic sacred place or something like that. Yep. Like, uh, what do you mean by that? Like, you want to tell our listeners a little bit more? Yeah, totally. So if you actually, I'm, I'm, a, I'm Irish uh, descent um, and I started getting into Celtic. Uh, music, and then that kind of like, and then I started getting intrigued, and I found this book called Celtic Land Sacred Landscapes, and I had always had this uh, a spiritual guide. She was talking about sacred spaces, you know, and then when I started to research more, um, like there's just different, really powerful energetic places all over Ireland, but they would build special, um, either dug out kind of ceremonial spaces or storage spaces or place that actually aligned with like a certain, the sun in a certain solstice time. Mm -hmm. Um, And all their spaces, they kind of come to like, there's a lot of like vortex kind of like vibe where it comes to the center point. And I thought that was really unique because essentially you can be anywhere and find a sacred space, you know, Mm -hmm. even in this building here, like, I might be with you guys, but I might be like, there's, there's got to be some place where I can be by myself to like connect, you know, connect with whatever that higher power might be or that energy. And I think um, when I started studying Celtic um, vibes a little bit more, I started to kind of see a little, and for me it reflected a physical uh, kind of recognition of that sacred space. And then I just kind of, because I'm a nitpicker, I nitpick little things like Native American, uh, indigenous, um, even Wiccan or uh, astrology, alchemy, all different sorts of stuff. I really nitpick, but the Celtic kind of like sacred energy really, for me, click because it's grounding and it's authentic. There's a part of my spirit that I feel is very connected to Celtic music and vibe and energy. So I, I learned that, and I, 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 I really like to have a sacred space at every show where I can just center and get to where because you really kind of connect with the deeper part of yourself to like be like this is why I'm here this is why I'm doing it and you know you can open yourself at that moment you know sometimes when external things are coming on you can kind of energetically lock up and so what I try to do is find a space where I can kind of open it if you see in Celtic's uh, uh, kind of landscapes they have these massive spirals you know so what that does is it's kind of like a vortex it's like the more open you are the more you can accept you know if you're closed it's like it's like knocking on the door you, and you're not opening it because you're not even you're so preoccupied you aren't aware that somebody's even knocking on the door or like when you can focus you can listen and you can hear everything and if there is someone knocking on the door you can open it up you know and if there's something energetically going on that might not be what you're looking for you have the capability to transmute that and kind of get that mm-hmm. out of the way because shows can be a lot of energy you know and it and it's infinite the energy that comes in is infinite so you, you also want to, when I tap into that sacred space, I remember to open up so that when energy comes in, I can recycle it out. I don't, I don't take on energy and keep it. It comes in and it recycles through me, so then anticipating that everybody kind of like thinks about that. That's kind of like one of my things. I'm like, man, I wish that everyone like kind of did a little of their own Reiki because if you went to a show and everybody was tapped in to their own energy and like also open and understood that kind of, process that transmuting kind of process imagine the vibes yeah. yeah. like, go, go, yeah, go, 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 you could create that though in Just due saying. time yeah. <laughs> so i love how you talk about finding sacred space and even when you're on tour because i'm curious of how you stay grounded even when you're traveling so much and 
you know, more about what kind of daily practices and rituals and things that you do on the road, and then, you know, how do you regenerate when you're off the road? Yeah. So on the road, uh, some of the, the, like having a sacred space at shows is very important. Or taking a time when we load in or after we've done something <clears throat> to take a moment to, to just breathe. Breathing is mm. huge. Gut breathing for me saved my whole entire life. You know, just breathing comfortably into your diaphragm so you know that everything's going to be okay, you know. So gut breathing is, is super helpful on the road. But also reading. I like reading on the road because if I get stuck in my phone on the road, it can be really kind of toxic, and you become in instant gratification vibe. Instead, if I read a book, it's very grounding for me, and I'm also I feel that I'm more available to the rest of the band because they can talk to me, and then I'll be able to put my book down and engage them. Uh, and then uh, also, you know, getting good sleep is as you can trying to find it it's really difficult to do that but eating good food is really important hydrating on the road um also like uh just just communicating making sure things are communicated on the road so that there's not lockups you know um and then uh you know a little bit of meditation there's times where things are are going and going and i just put my headphones in put some chill stuff on my phone and even if it's five ten minutes just a little bit of quiet time it saves me, you know, because it saves your ears, it saves your vocals, it saves all the stuff, so. You've kind of put in this whole entire process where you're like, a little bit of this, a little bit of that, and it reminds me of like, mixing some things up of uh, your own little pot, you're like, oh, I like some indigenous, I like some of that, uh, which reminds me of what we were talking about earlier about alchemy, mm -hmm. and like, what is your concept of alchemy? Um, are you going to give us gold? Because we need some gold nuggets. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, yeah. I'll, uh, I didn't bring any gold nuggets today. Yeah. Okay, uh, I'll wait. <laughs> it, it, well, it's really, it's really interesting you say that, uh, too, because I think that's one of the best, uh, most beautiful parts about alchemy is that when you really start to focus on it and do it, you start to realize that you might produce those gold nuggets and, or you know, tangible things where it is like, it's, it's like a crystal being made within the rock it, after time and pressure and energy and time and space. And it, it creates this unbelievably beautiful crystal, you know, and the crystal, it's like, it, it's funny because the crystal is just like, but I'm just who I am now, you know, mm. and it's, and it's an alchemy. It's like the self as well is there's pressure and things that happen. If I can use that information, that energy to, to focus more on bettering myself, but strengthening myself, or uh, you know, understanding my spiritual path, or or just living my day by day naturally to who I am, like what my crystal structure might be, or what my dimensional shape, or you know, vocalization or physicality might be, or energetically. I think that's the beauty of alchemy: is that you are your own alchemist. We're all our own alchemists. We're all our own. Uh, magicians, you know, if you will, and we can we can really tap into that inner power and inner capability that we've been given so naturally. And so, uh, I think with I think with learning more about myself and and alchemizing and and learning more about that because I'm still like you know I still have a lot of ways to go into the information and learning. But when I take what I've learned gone through in my life and I perform on stage, it helps, like it helps immensely. I think anybody in whatever career they might have, if they meditate, if they eat well, if they focus on their feelings or emotions or their thoughts, or maybe they don't, maybe they just shut down, but they do things that they know are better for themselves or they listen to their intuition they, and they follow their soul purpose, that will amplify in every aspect of their lives, whether relationships, you know, finances, love, uh, uh, you know, your work, your hobbies, your physicality, your diet, everything kind of amplifies when you focus more on, on your own way of, of uh, your own way of alchemizing your energy work or Reiki, if you will, you know. Yeah, I totally agree with that. I think to be the conscious creator of your life, right, you got to, like, work with yourself 
and because that's all we really have control of if we get right down to it is our own emotions, our own intentions, our own balance physically and spiritually. So giving a lot of attention to that does have a ripple effect out on every other aspect of your life and can totally make the most of it and create it in the way that you most desire. So thank you for that input and great reminder to all of our listeners. So I really want to know what was a specific moment on tour that felt super magical and memorable to you? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Uh, <laughs> okay. <laughs> I can I can answer Tell that question. Tell us a story. <laughs> um, I think, uh, you know, that one moment when I saw my friend in the back really jiving out, that was pretty amazing. Mm. Um, there was also, I think probably like, right off, uh, uh, there's, there's so many moments that are so uniquely interesting and powerful unto themselves. Um, but for me, I think the best moment was, I had a lot of nerves going into this tour. We had to prepare, we had to learn a whole album by Fleetwood Mac. And Lindsey Buckingham's style is a claw hammer style. Like, it's very unique. He has a very unique style. Luckily, I had kind of had a very similar style prior, so that helped, but I still had to remember all the chord changes and and I'm kind of a very floaty kind of like guy, so for having that kind of like focus on the preparation was very uh, difficult for, I don't want to say difficult, but I got through and I did well with it. So the first show when we were at the water hole, the crowd was packed and we started right into it and just like getting right into it and knowing that it was all gonna be okay. You know, I was very nervous prior. I was like, oh my God, am I gonna be able to do this? And a lot of the rhythm guitar line on me, so when we started hitting it, that first show and the energy in the room was just incredible for this first set. I was like, I'm good. I think it was like that kind of felt like a weight kind of like off the shoulders and I knew I was like, I'm totally good. You're like, oh yeah, I know what I'm doing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Where I really did not feel that way going into it. I was like, I hope I don't mess up a bunch. Right. <laughs> well, you get to, you know, you get to help out a bunch of people and you give them their own therapy through this uh, music that you do. And I want to, like, bring it full circle to originally when we said ther sound therapy. And I want to know, like, what is this sound therapy you speak of? What is this witchcraft? Like, yeah, totally. What is it? <laughs> what is this witchcraft? <laughs> um, yeah, sound therapy. I think sound therapy is uh, everything can kind of be, a, a, you know, a reflection of, or of itself, I guess you could say. But um, sound therapy, for me, is something that is really important. Because I used, I, I like it before. I used to think like when I volunteered and played guitar, like that was like one thing that was like something I did, and it all started when I went down to the Children's Hospital in um, Jacksonville, Florida, and I volunteered because I I've just always felt this ability to do that. I guess you could say I don't know how to explain it. Like I felt like I should be doing that. I should be using my gifts to help. So I went down there, and it was Wolf's Hospital, and the woman was, like, very skeptic and very, like, okay, because a lot of people go, and they want to help, but, like, they want to help for for different intentions, I think. So I went through there, and I was like, well, hey, I can play guitar, however you might think that would be appropriate. I'm, I'm here to help. So she started having me perform in the hospital in the hallway, and then I just started having nurses just coming and sitting down next to me and doing their charts and writing and they were just so happy and then the woman right off the bat was like okay I gotta have you because darling we're gonna have you come in here and do this and we're gonna have you that and so that's when I kind of knew that there was something special about it but then I uh and then I started doing yoga classes I started working in retirement homes I started doing sound therapy and um children with disabilities uh, uh BOCES disabilities uh all different kind of sorts of environments and then I started to realize in sound therapy I was actually doing that at shows and I had only kind of come into that in the past probably like two years of my career I always thought that I was just performing a show and it was fun and I and then I would have people come up to me this one time we were in Burlington I played a show and this woman who was about like 61 years old and it was a day show at like one to three in the afternoon and she came up to me and she was just she was in tears and she was like I just it was so beautiful. I'm so moved by your performance. Just thank you so much. And hugged me. And, and I started becoming a little emotional.
dimensional too. And and I and I that's when I started to realize that it's kind of universal. You know, whatever you do with whatever intention you put out there is therapeutic to some people. You know, and it could be cooking grilled cheeses. It could be like you know teching out a snowboard for somebody. It could be like just you know putting your hand on somebody and being like it's gonna be okay. Like so, the thousand sound period therapy cell was something that I've been able to kind of like come together. Um, do you want to show us some sound therapy? Oh, well, <laughs> funny thing is, I happen to have my little mandatar right here, so. So you want to show us a little bit of that sound therapy that you told us about there? Yes, of course, I can totally do that. So this is, uh, this is like a little tune that I usually play, um, to kind of like, it, it, an in-between moment, but it's not going to be anything long, but it'll be a nice little, nice little ditty, so. <laughs> Therapeutic. Yeah. Go get my Medicaid card. <laughs> Here's my therapy. I got my therapy for the day. Well, thank you very much. We really appreciate the therapeutic oh. experience. Appreciate it. Uh, so now let's bring it into our favorite segment of the show, witching and bitching. Wait, get the head on. Get the head yep, on. Yep. Yep. Hold on. Here we go. And witching yeah. and bitching. <laughs> That was great. Yeah, nice. That's exactly what we want from Witching and Bitches. It's got like a lion. I know. It, it got a little like deep at the end. Like, rah. It got like, I was thinking like, what if I did it like a Dr. Evil vibe to it? But then it just got like deep. It was like the Grinch meets like a Leo. Yes. <laughs> yeah, what was What's the Grinch, Grinch like? Be? The Grinch? Yeah, that would be so funny. What oh, do you the, think Grinch? the Grinch? Is... I, Grinch would be a fucking Virgo. Yeah. <laughs> That's the fuck with a Virgo. Yeah. <laughs> That's the Fuck what a Grinch would say. Like, man, Grinch is not clean enough. enough. He has to have it his way. It has to be organized. Everything has to be in a certain way. And mm -hmm. uh, fuck everyone if they don't go the way of them. Yeah. So yeah, hashtag Virgo vibes. Virgo vibes. <laughs> <laughs> we uh, love a lot of Virgos. We love Virgos. They're, All of our Virgos. They're like our best friends. Yeah. Thank you uh, for <laughs> dealing with our airy, because we're a Libra Gemini, like. Yeah, totally. uh, Yeah. Of the airiness of it. So, to all our Virgo uh, vibes out there, we actually appreciate you and yes. we love you. Yes. But you're kind of the Grinch. Yeah. <laughs> we still love you. But you, place do, our hearts. you do help me kind They're of like, yeah, like, get fuck it right. you, Cindy Lou Who. <laughs> yeah. Cindy Lou Who, the cancer of the world. Yes! <laughs> totally. Um, so, let's talk about some in Witching and Bitching for our new listeners here. We like to talk about this is part of the show where we bitch about something in our witch hats for all of our uh, watchers right here. Uh, so tell us, Michael. Yes. What is something you want to bitch about? Uh, something I want to bitch about. This is so funny. Um, I think what I want to bitch about is, uh, you know what is, I don't usually like to bitch about much of anything. <laughs> just bitch but, about but just Show bitch. the tea. That was, uh, that was my, what do you call that? My disclaimer. But honestly, I... I'm kind of annoyed, if you will, with the polarization of the political environment. Right now. I think it's for me. I think there's a part of me that I'm like, wow, this is our, this is our government, and there's, and I don't want to get too deep. In He's, the going going He's going there. He's going there. Not trying Spill to that tea. That's <laughs> <laughs> all fucked. No. Um, <laughs> It, I think there's there's a part of me that like I don't think it's like so much like oh man but it's just like are we not there yet kind of thing you know yeah. are we not there on a emotional and mature level I think politically I think there's still a lot of ego that is played out in politics which is the ego is a part of our lives we all have an ego we all play out with that I think I just part of me wishes that consciously our government was just and, and, and different governments in the world, if it, if it wasn't so intently focused on power, money, and, uh, you know, personal interest, and more focused on the 
the betterment of humanity and conscious re uh, evolution sustainability you know and that's I think there's an element that's being highlighted right now with the current uh, election but I also just the whole like combative attacking vibe <clears throat> of it, it I just don't dig it I just don't think aggressive confrontation achieves anything I think a more conscious approaching you know mature uh, uh, like you know angle could probably achieve a lot more in a shorter amount of time so that's where i'm bitching it's yeah. monkeys throwing a bunch of poop right <laughs> like if you think about it it's like everyone's like oh it's definitely only the right nope nope yeah. it's everybody it's everyone, everyone, everyone fucking everyone. sucks right yes. now yeah everyone's throwing shit everyone's making their thing you can't just blame one side because you're fucking you have a handful of fucking shit and you're about to fucking launch it at me totally right now and i can like sit back as an observer and notice that no that's definitely both sides are children right now. Yeah. And I think of um, that visualization of, like, the child in preschool or kindergarten, and they're both shoving each other's <laughs> fucking head in yeah. the fucking sand, and they're like, oh, doesn't that suck? Yeah. <laughs> but, it's, but it's funny because, like, mostly, like, a lot of people actually grab, like, most voters really do gravitate in the middle. Yeah. You, know? but you see focus, and also I think media plays into that. You see these focuses on kind of, the the extremist approach and I mean I wish some of those people would kind of be a little more hip to jive or a little bit more balanced in their own lives but we focus on that in the media so much too and and for me I find that to be sometimes very annoying but at the same time like that's just what it is and I'm in this life to kind of like surf that wave mm -hmm. and you know there's some lesson to be learned in it and I'm just part of it now and who knows I'm just hoping that you know down the road, we're going to have a, a system that will be a little bit more aware. More than two parties? Yeah, let's hope <laughs> yeah. we see that in our lifetime. I don't know. Mm -hmm. I was watching this thing like by Joe Rogan, actually, the other day, and on one of his podcasts he did, and it was funny because it was like, humankind is like so... Like, it fucking advanced right now when it comes to, like, technology. We have, like, all this, like, crazy high-tech weaponry and, like, all this shit. But we can't get down, like, the basic fucking idea of like compassion for another human being and like yeah. we can't get over racism and sexism and hate and all of this it's like really like why are we advancing in this way and not advancing in the way that actually matters yeah like, yeah it's just really Absolutely. frustrating for sure i mean i i you know and i'm not trying to isolate one person but there was a candidate that spent who's now out they're not in the race but i commend them for trying their best but they dropped, personally, they, they, they dropped in their campaign $300 million plus, you know, to, to, to reach some sort of level with, with, within the political system. And I just, I, it's like, there's just a lot. It's like, you look at that and you're like, well, like, you know, good old college try, nice job, I guess. You know, at least he did it. He had the finances to be able to do that. But it's like, if, if somebody has the ability to do that, for the purpose of being in some sort of position, like imagine what, how many better positions in life they could give other people with that money. And yeah. I'm not trying to say that and like everybody should just like to be given money and and like because you know like then there's the argument everyone's going to take advantage of it if they get all this free money. And I get that too, but there's programs, there's there's ways of investing money into into this research or programs that really do help on a larger humanitarian scale, so. I seen uh, a meme today, actually, and it had like, uh, you know the urinals in the men's bathroom? Yep. And it was like 100 deep, and yeah. it had one guy peeing in the corner, and then it had a guy that like ran all the way and goes, hi, I'm Mike Bloomberg. <laughs> <laughs> Have you heard? Yeah. No, I didn't. To so the one right next to the yeah, guy? Right next yeah. to the guy to be like, oh my God. Going way that. far out of his way. Um, to <laughs> drop that money to think, like, literally out of his way out of his way yeah. to be like hey let me go pee next to you and talk about a campaign that's going to yeah. lose and then drop that anyway yeah. he was millions of dollars into that so well he, yeah. I'm sorry if I got it into a political no no era. girl that's all no you're fine that's what that's why we do witching and bitching is we <laughs> want to hear like I think it's healthy to have a certain level 
of bitchitude. It's like we can't be all woke all the time because yep. then you are toxic positivity. Yeah. And we've talked about that in our earlier podcast to where like, yes, we are trying to like high vibe all the time and we're trying to be like, yes, I'm a conscious individual that sends out love and love to myself. But you have to acknowledge the negative sometime because if you're not acknowledging the negativity, you're being tos toxically positive saying everything's okay. You know, oh, totally, uh, totally. you're going to be fine. No politics. There is no problem with dropping four million fucking dollars that you could have helped someone else. So you pissed on me a little bit yeah. and no one's going to vote for you. Totally. Sure. Go ahead. Bloom fuck. Like, <laughs> like, and that's, it's okay to recognize these things to say, this is a fucked up system. Yep. And if we never show that the system is fucked up, then it gets buried and it just gets in like the mixed media cnn fox yeah. news msnbc oh, yeah. they're all the fucking same yeah. and it's on their you know whatever scale you're at yep and it's all about they're just a bunch of monkeys throwing poop at each other yep <laughs> yeah and it's when do we as america evolve as joe rogan was saying to have that compassionate i uh what i like to tell people is speak your truth with compassion yeah. You can still speak your truth. You can still say what is within you and what's passionate about you and what drives you. We are in a country where we're all about unique beliefs and all about that. You know, I might not agree with you, but at the same time, like, hear me out. Yep. Um, but we have to enter that state and bring awareness that, like, peeing on me and giving three hundred million dollars when it can <laughs> or more. Yeah, yeah. You could fucking do better shit with it. Yeah, like, totally. Yeah, <laughs> it's okay totally. to bitch about uh, monkeys throwing poop. Yeah. No, I totally, I totally get that as well. I, uh, I usually, I, I, there's an element of uh, what I'm working on right now too. Is I've always been kind of, okay, we'll figure this out, we'll get it taken care of. But also that element, but, but you're right. Like especially the more success or growth or um, whatever you know I've been going through, you you start to realize you have to put your foot down a certain way. You have to mm -hmm. recognize things that are not going smooth in order for some sort of growth to happen. You have mm -hmm. to highlight an uh, aspect that is uncomfortable or negative or, or whatever you might say. I think the way that, for me, I've just seen it is like, yeah, it's definitely negative. I definitely like highlight them in my own life, for sure. I think I've just seen it, like we were talking about today, about the retrograde, Mercury retrograde. It's like, mm -hmm. I always see it as alchemy. Like, I see everything as, even when it's like negative or, or shitty or whatever, I see that as some sort of, spark for me to be like okay and where do i learn from this yeah but there is like definitely stuff that i'm just like oh my gosh i can't believe this is actually real i can't believe yeah. it yeah you know? yeah even like you know <laughs> people who i've spent a lot of time with in my life or places i used to go like or even when i look at myself i'm like oh my gosh i can't believe i used to do that you know yeah. like i think there is definitely a lot of elements in life where there's there's a highlight to something that you can bitch about for sure <laughs> Um, and it's learning through that, like you said, with Mercury retrograde, you know, it's, it's going through the fire and learning that experience and not being comfortable with sitting on the outside and saying, I'm not ready to learn this lesson. It's, you know, sometimes you need to have adversity in order to grow. Yes. And that's how you know where to set your boundaries and what to say no to, because boundaries and saying no are really important in, in any kind of growth. You know, you can't just go with the flow all the time. you oh, got to totally. be like, nope, this is where I draw the line. No longer yeah. serves me. Yeah, because yeah. then you start to realize that you're, like, I remember a spiritual guy told me, it's like, you know, not everybody is going to be able to fit on the magic carpet ride. Ah, you know? and that's I was good. Like, oh, that's very interesting. But, <laughs> well, I got my spot ready. Because yeah. <laughs> I think there's an element of even myself where I, I always, I, I can see, like, a need of somebody to, like, needs a little help and I can help them. But then I started to realize like energetically yeah. I have a capacity and I don't need to totally pour out my capability or capacity energetically of compassion or love or support or information if it's not being reciprocated, you know? And or so received I, even. Exactly. You know? yeah. Exactly. Because yeah, it can be like energetically you could be putting so much out and that can be just hitting a brick wall and and then it's not reciprocated, and it's like what we were talking about earlier. It could create a longing or create a confusion or a, a why, why me kind of scenario, you know? So you start to realize where you can put your energy into it, and it, like, like planting a seed like we were talking about before. It's like 
you wouldn't go into a field that's completely just toxic and, and got so much crap in it and polluted and go and expect to plant a beautiful garden and have it be completely successful. The thing is, you still will be able to get at least some strong seeds that will grow out of it. You know, But typically you're like, if I want to plant a lot, I'll invest my harvest into this good field that I've you know, curated and, and put the nutrients in. And then that field that is a little toxic, you know, I'll take my time and, and weed that out and wait until maybe it becomes a more perfect place to plant seeds, you know. That reminded me of that, uh, again, meme culture. Have you ever seen that picture or that meme where it has a dog and he is surrounded by fire and he goes, this is fine? No. <laughs> uh, well, you're a dog that's surrounded by fire all the time. All the time. Yeah, right? <laughs> Hashtag puppy play fire. Um, so, yeah, if you want to look up, um, look up dog, fire this is fine meme <laughs> meme yeah. and it just has a picture of like it's a cartoon it's a picture of a dog and he's surrounded by fire and he just like picks up his tea and he goes yep this is fine <laughs> and it's like no it's this tea. fucking shit is not fine my yeah. house is on fucking fire the yeah. political scene is on fire <laughs> yeah, it totally. it's a dumpster fire and it needs to be corrected Agreed. um and that's why people it's sometimes okay to have a witch and enrichment session. Right? Dude. <laughs> witch and enrichment's great. It's like every it's Wednesday, is this a club? Yeah. <laughs> this, this is good. See, yeah. you get a witch hat? Yeah. Stories. I know I got a I got an OG witch hat. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. This is like broken in witch hat. This is proper witch hat. Dude. I'm into it. Um, so that brings me to tell me where our listeners can find you and like What's going on? Got any music coming up? Got Instagrams? Oh, yes. Oh, well, jealous. you can find tour dates for Annie in the Water at AnnieInTheWater.com. Well, www.AnnieInTheWater.com uh, and slash tour. Or you can just go to our website. You can find all sorts of information there. If you'd like to follow us on Instagram, it is at Annie in the Water on one word. Uh, also, that is our Twitter handle as well. We're not terribly involved in Twitter because Twitter is kind of weird. But on Facebook, you can find us at facebook.com slash Annie in the Water. And we keep a lot of activity on our Instagram and our Facebook. And my personal information and uh, places where you can reach me is uh, at, or on Instagram, at Michael underscore Lasham. So my first name, underscore Lasham. How do you spell that? Uh, that is, oh yeah, so Michael is spelled M-I-C-H-A-E-L underscore Lasham, L-A-S-H-O, M is in man, B is in boy. So L-A-S-H-O-M-B. So cool. and that's where you can find those different spots. And then uh, what we have coming up is we have a live album that might be coming around that we might be dropping soon. Mm -hmm. We also have some new song materials. And we have, a, uh, we have a tour that we're coming up to right now that I'm very excited about. Uh, where we'll be performing at a bunch of really awesome mountains all around Vermont, uh, and the Adirondacks, and uh, and then doing a little mini tour down to Baltimore. So I'm really stoked. Hell yeah! Where can we listen to your music? You can listen to Annie in the Water on Spotify, both our mm -hmm. first album Destination and our second album Time to Play. On Spotify, you can go on to YouTube. Uh, which has, if you just look up Annie in the Water, you'll find all sorts of different content from other uploaded users to Annie in the Waters as well. And uh, you can go to SoundCloud, where Annie in the Water has an account on SoundCloud, but pretty much Spotify and YouTube are the main like listening channels. Cool. Yeah. Yeah. Awesome. Well, thank you so, so much for being here. Yeah, thanks. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> yeah, guys, we appreciate man. you. Dude, this is such a cool podcast, man. I hope that, <laughs> I, and thank you for everyone who's listening, because uh, like I said earlier, this is wonderful information, and I'm sure everyone out there is grateful for what you guys do, because this is, this is wonderful conversation. Yeah, well, thank you, and we'll have you back sometime. When, once you've expanded more, we have more to talk about. <laughs> Expansion? Ooh, that sounds yeah. great. You'll transmute into your next version. Yeah. We want those fucking gold nuggets, Michael! I'm sure I'll remember to bring them next time. <laughs> nice. So, we are Fireburn Cauldron Bubble. You can find us on Instagram and Facebook as well. Just search Fireburn Cauldron Bubble. And you can also visit our website, firebourncauldronbubble.com. 
and you can join our mailing list there. And once you do that, you're going to get an email with a link to a free video that we made for you that's all about how to build an altar. Uh, thank you guys again for listening. Uh, my name is Artemis Fox. I'm Luna Hawks. And this is Fire Burn Cauldron Bubble. Casting spells. And sassy as hell. Yeah, Yay. that was awesome. Yeah. <laughs> that was great. I love the out outgoing. That's kick ass. I love That's that. That's fun. Yeah, it's great.